finally, we're back to another building session in Planet Coaster. Welcome to the Dimmodome Coaster Pit, owned by Doug Dimmodome himself. Starting off with a nice fly through, we have the two new single rail coasters that we built. These things are massive and we're gonna have to build a lot of infrastructure around that today. And I wanted to show you guys this awesome view of the pit that has every single coaster running at the same time. We have a train running on every single track. Now the reason I haven't been building for a while is because I knew today's building session was going to be pretty difficult. I was gonna to have to spend hours upon hours building some pretty tough structures. But that is what we do today and the end product is definitely worth it. So. I encourage you to watch to the end of the video. I finished a lot of building today and I set up for some even cooler building in the next episode. So pretty much to summarize our main building focus today is we are putting a roof over this main entrance. We are going to decorate in front of the theme park and we are going to build up some basic infrastructure in the left wing of the theme park so we can set up ourselves to build a new roller coaster at the beginning of next episode. So the main reason we haven't put a roof on the building yet is because I wanted to build this new ride and these two new coaster stations up here. And now that we have those in place, it is time to build the building around it. So we're gonna start off by building a lot of glass windows because we like having the natural light come in. And this building ended up being very, very tall, but it's okay. It's supposed to be a monument. We're trying to get people to visit this place from around the world. This opening structure ended up having a lot of empty space, which is what I was going for. I wanted it to feel very open and very abstract, but I'm glad we fit some things in here. We got a ride, the monorail goes through. We have a couple coaster stations. We have the RMC coaster that cuts through the very center. We have some restaurants and some vending machines and tables for the guests to hang out and eat and watch the other people walk into the park. So next I made these gigantic zigzagged roof pieces to put on the very top of the building. It's so crazy that we're finally putting a roof on this, finally. And I'm placing a very large open space on the top of this wall where I'm gonna place a sign for the theme park, which the sign is gonna say birdcage because we agreed that Birdcage is going to be the name of the park, right? Are we good with that? We have Birdcage and then the Coaster Pit, created by Lil Tall but owned by Doug Dimido. Since my other theme park is called Toucan Kingdom, I thought having a bird concept would be really cool. Have everything that I create have some sort of affiliation to birds. Unless the Planet Coaster series I create isn't actually canon with this theme park in the Toucan Kingdom, because so far these are the only two theme parks in that universe technically. My third park, which is Sapphire City, is its own universe because I had some crazy constraints when building that. Since it was a tiny park challenge, I was very limited, so I'm not technically considering that part of the same universe, but I do love that park. It's cool in its own very unique way. I truly learned about Planet Coaster's building styles when I started creating a tiny park. It really changed my perspective. So I continued adding a lot of pillars and supports to make this main structure not look so flimsy because since it's so tall and is now holding up a lot of weight, it would take a lot of big steel beams to support a structure this large with how much weight it has to hold up with theme park rides at the very top. And then in front of the building, I built this giant metal canopy which I've been planning to add this for a while, and I don't know why it took me so long to build this, but all the stuff we're about to do right now is about to really make the front of this theme park look so much better. We're about to decorate it up a little bit so the front of the theme park matches what you're gonna find on the inside. I think in the future, I might add some parking spaces. It might like create a system for pick up and drop off through cars because it's pretty important. And we could have a monorail system to like be considered a tram to bring people closer to the park. But for today, I'm just gonna focus on some decoration and just kind of tying the building into the surrounding area a little bit better. 
And also, I wanted some really dope looking decorations to just really make this entrance pop off. So I created some zero G rolls out of one of the steel coasters and I made them really, really big. And then I placed a few of them over this overhang and created a giant roller coaster sculpture in front of the theme park. So you knew this was a theme park. We're not trying to fool anybody here. We want the real coaster enthusiasts. But what we're about to do here has been a long time coming. We've definitely needed to just make the entrance of this park look a little bit more put together because right now it looks a bit industrial. It's really barren, nothing going on. Currently the theme park looks more like an apocalypse bunker than an actual theme park. So <laughs> let's like just put some trees and bushes and some decorations, get some more water and just freshen it up a little bit. Our goal is to make it look very inviting. It's pretty important that we give people good photo opportunities to post on Instagram because that's going to be one of the best ways that we promote this theme park in the first place. Because I know pretty darn well that nobody's looking at pamphlets or brochures anymore. Be honest, when's the last time you've read a brochure? Brochures used to be something you'd pick up in the lobby of areas because you needed something to preoccupy your time. But now you don't need that anymore. Now the only advertisement I see is on social media. Like, I don't see any other type, pretty much. I don't even see YouTube ads because I pay for YouTube Premium. That's the only streaming service I pay for. I don't pay for anything. I guess I have Amazon Prime as well, so I have Amazon Video, I think is what it's called. So I only see YouTube, like, sponsorship ads when a YouTuber actually talks about it. But then most of the time I like skip through the ad, but I still like see what the product is. I think the other form of advertisement I see the most is billboards. But I don't think billboards are, are the most cost effective way of promoting things. I guess billboards are good for brand awareness, but it really doesn't teach us that much about the brand. It's like, it's like a very impersonal form of marketing. Well, on the other hand, sponsored YouTubers can talk about a product pretty in depth and add a lot more value to the advertisement in general, along with awareness. And right now I'm building a lot of other paths around these main paths that are more for just leisure and decoration. I'm going to place a lot of like bushes and flowers and trees and stuff around here. And I, I just didn't want to feel like it was just one gigantic path, like some walk of doom up to the theme park like imagine just being super afraid of roller coasters and having to walk this super straight scary path of doom up to the theme park i needed to lighten things up a little bit make it seem like you had some choices to you know meander to the side of the path left and right a little bit more i will say it is pretty weird building something outdoors right now because this whole entire theme park has been indoor building which I know the building itself is outside, but like everything has been very contained. And now I'm just building stuff out in the open. And this is going to be like one of the only times. Because everything else I'm building is constrained to the interiors of my indoor complex. This building is almost just a jail for roller coasters. But also it keeps the roller coasters preserved longer because it doesn't have to deal with the elements. But the building on the outside has to deal with the elements, so it's just as much upkeep regardless. Joke's on us. So now I'm going to spend a lot of time working on this building. As you can see, this episode's pretty long. I didn't want to skimp out on you coming back. So I put a lot of time into this episode. We get a lot of building done. And I, even after getting all of it done, there's still so much left to do. Building an indoor theme park has just so many extra details to it, but it's so worth it because it's all looking so cool and I'm so happy with this end product. I'm doing a lot of outlining on the very front of this building though because I want it to look very bold. Like I said, when people take pictures, it needs to really pop. These big black pillars on the edges are like eyeliner for the building. It just makes things pop against the background and helps you see the dimension of the building. And it's really a simple tactic to make your buildings look a lot more detailed. It helps take away some of the boxiness of your structure just by a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit. 
and there's not really that much else you can do on a structure like this apart from adding these pillars as outlines and adding extra supports. We're kind of limited when we're building with just like steel beams and glass. I am happy with the way this entrance is looking. The updates have changed it tremendously and now I feel way more confident about the entrance of the park. Now this might be one of the most difficult tasks about all of this so far, and that is connecting an entrance and exit up for both of these single rail coasters that we built last episode. Both of these coasters need to be connected to this main path here in the center, and I'll tell you what, it was a lot more difficult than you would expect, and I cut out all of the difficulties in editing because it was pretty obnoxious, but sometimes building paths this far up in the air can really be a struggle. It's not super bad, but every once in a while you'll get a path that is just in a really weird spot and your path system tries to connect to the wrong path, like down below, and you just have to angle things perfectly and it can take some time. And right now you see me doing something pretty massive. This is kind of just an outline, but I wanted to get a path up to the very top of the building because yes, I do plan to build a couple roller coasters on the very, very roof of the complex. And we'll have to put a dome over the entire thing to keep it all self-contained. This path leading up there definitely needs to be worked on a bit, but we can get to that later. And I think that is really gonna take this building and this theme park to the next level. And it's also just another reason to love Planet Coaster. The fact that it allows us to build stuff like this in the first place is so massive. Such a big blessing. Thank you so much to the people who made this amazing game. But also, to the people who made this amazing game, how come you couldn't have given us some more options to build paths? Because even the very first Roller Coaster Tycoon games had some path building modes and options that Planet Coaster doesn't have that made it way easier to build floating paths. If we could just have those features back, it would be amazing, please. Building stuff in the air like this would be so much easier. But on the plus side, I was eventually able to get everything connected. So now all of these coasters up here are fully accessible. Guests can come up here and board them whenever, whenever I open the coasters, I guess. And then it's also cool just to come all the way up to this very front Gravitron type ride and look out over the city. And this is our small little intermission before getting into the second half of building this episode because we're just getting started. So the next thing that we're going to focus on is these gigantic brick structures in the very center of this room are gonna be our main pillars of support. And we're gonna start shaping these a little bit better and then trying to cap them off in certain ways. It's just a lot of just different details that we gotta add, especially now that we have some coaster tracks kind of running alongside them. The hardest part is going to make everything look finished. Next, I'm building a glass wall to sort of separate where these coasters are with the main entrance to first just kind of block the sound, but also just make the building not feel too, too open. I wanted the coaster stations to feel like their own little perch. This was overall a very awkward placement for these coaster stations to begin with but I knew I could make it work with enough building and I think it's worth having these giant single rail coasters going around the whole entire perimeter of the coaster dome. I think these two coasters alone add a really surreal element to this whole entire coaster pit that cannot be replaced. And I feel like it couldn't even be done with any other type of coaster track apart from these I-beam single rail coasters. These types of coasters just feel like they have a little bit more potential when it comes to doing weird type of layouts. Now I still have yet to ride a single rail coaster in real life. Somehow I've been avoiding them, but I cannot wait until that day comes because I've heard so many good things about them. The closest one to me is Six Flags Magic Mountain, but I haven't been there in a couple years because I had season passes back in 2021 and I don't see the point in getting season passes like too many years in a row. I like to wait for the park to change every few years before I get the next season pass. So what I'm building right here is a sort of greenhouse of sorts. I want it to have a bit more vegetation incorporated into this building. So I'm building this giant cobblestone structure where I'm going to put a big tree surrounded in bushes. 
That way it feels a bit more like a park, even though you're super duper high in the air. And my other consideration was to put some sort of small ride right here, but I thought that might look a little bit messy. I felt like some trees and some nature would go a long way and also maybe provide some fresher oxygen in the building. I am definitely happy with this design choice and it is now my goal to find more ways to add more trees and bushes to the interior of this building. We are now capping a lot more of the building, putting roof over everything and then trimming it out. Of course, gotta make it look all snazzy, add in the trim everywhere so the building doesn't look like it's some sort of origami project. As a Swedish person, I say this with all due respect, but I don't want this looking like some IKEA furniture. No, our building is gonna be super strong and high quality. We're trying to make this place as high quality as the person watching this video right now. You know what I'm saying. All right, so I'm deleting this wall right here because I wanted it to be a bit more open. I decided the flow was better with some more openness right here so you could see the new tree that we placed. I thought this wall looked way too blank. You know, adding some trim, just it fixes that issue. You know what I'm saying? You know, it still looks a bit too empty. Let's add some more trim, you know, trim it out. And I want to put some bushes down here. I, I said I was going to add more bushes. I'm following through with that promise already. I don't think anything else could even be in this spot except for more bushes. You know, building stuff in Planet Coaster reminds me of that new form of digital art where you can draw a picture and then you can continue zooming in further and further and further and you like zoom in on one detail and it turns out there's like a whole planet on somebody's eyeball and then on that planet you can keep on zooming in and it just keeps on going. What I'm trying to get at is Planet Coaster is kind of like that. You can focus on building your bigger picture or you can zoom in and work on smaller things to an almost what feels like infinite level. Of course, you have to stop at some point, but sometimes it feels like when you're detailing things, you could go on forever because I have seen people build custom things in this game where they'll spend like 10 hours building a bench and they'll build the bench like one piece of wood at a time and use like tons of little shapes and build like the perfect bench. But sometimes you have to just, you know, just use the bench piece in my opinion. I try to not focus too much on the detail because if you get too detail oriented while building in Planet Coaster, your builds literally can take infinite amount of time. But the other issue is there is somewhat a limit to how much stuff you can put in your park when it comes to the number of scenery pieces, but that number is very, very high, as you guys have probably seen in my series, Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park. Building the first Ultimate Theme Park really opened my mind and helped me realize how many pieces you could use while building these theme parks in Planet Coaster. So that's why going into future builds, it's like even more exciting because now I know what my limitations are. And then hopefully those limitations will keep going higher and higher as I get a better computer in the future, hopefully and if they continue to release better, more optimized versions of these games. Now, it feels like working on this section of the building is starting to drag out a little bit to me. So in a moment, we're gonna start working on the left wing. We're gonna start outlining the new stuff that we're gonna build because the right wing is almost finished, but the left wing has a lot of work. So we're gonna start doing some outlines. But first, let's place some benches and trash cans on the outside of the park. Just dot these paths with some areas for the people to rest because it's a very long walk. Although I don't think the guests sit on benches outside of the theme park. Their only goal is to walk to the entrance. So I don't think any of these will even be used, but that's no reason to not add the details. But we've been getting a lot done this video. I'm very excited with the continuation of this project. I never, none of my projects are ever fully finished. Everything is always an infinite process. Oh shoot, we need to get some more vendors in here. Even when I have staff rooms, for some reason the vendors always eventually quit. So I just need to hire a new battalion every so often, it's no big deal. But the last thing we're gonna work on this video is like I said, we're gonna start outlining some of the stuff on this left wing. Next episode, I wanna start off by building a new roller coaster over here. But before I did that, I needed to just kind of get some of these buildings straightened up and we're gonna start building a nightclub. And this nightclub is gonna be named Trop House and it's going to have a futuristic jungle theme to it. 
and then we're gonna have a roller coaster going around the trap house. Overall, it's gonna be a lot more than a nightclub. It's more so gonna be a small concert venue for DJs and small artists, along with being a restaurant and a full service bar. Now, I wanna say that this is the first Planet Coaster video that I've posted in 2024. It's crazy, we're another year into the future. And as far as news about Planet Coaster, uh, there's not any about Planet Coaster necessarily, but the developers, Frontier, announced that Planet Zoo is going to be coming out soon for console release. And they previously, I think, released one of the final DLCs for Planet Zoo. So it seems like Planet Zoo is getting closer to the end of its development life, which is cool and bad. Like, it's cool that they were still adding on and developing onto that game. And it's going to be sad that they're going to stop. But if they're done with that, it means another game on the Planet franchise, hopefully soon. Planet Zoo seems like it's a really good game to potentially sell on consoles, though. I hope that they are able to adapt it well. I still think it would be super rad if they ended up adding Planet Zoo into Planet Coaster. Just make a crossover experience where you can build both in the same game. Conceptually, that doesn't seem impossible to implement, and Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 combined roller coasters and zoo, so I don't see why not. I could definitely see that being a thing they do in the future, and they probably haven't yet because they're still building a lot of these base games and HD models and creatures. Whatever happens though, I'll still be here. So the goal for this building is not for it to actually be a full building, I want this concert venue to be mostly outdoors, but still have some walls and hallways and gonna have a kitchen, some bathrooms, we'll have a bar and some tables, but for the most part, this is an outdoor restaurant. But the reason we can do that is because technically it's all still indoors. And I was like, do I really wanna completely just close this whole entire thing off when it's technically indoors? I could make a indoor outdoor concert venue so that's what this is it's an indoor outdoor nightclub <laughs> it's technically an outdoor club but it's technically indoors it's a mind trip don't think too hard about it there are going to be some walls but for the most part it's going to be a very very open floor plan we are getting pretty close to the end of this episode so i want to take a moment and thank you guys for being patient with me on this series like I've mentioned before, these videos take a lot of work and I don't always have the time or willpower to put in that work, but when I do, I feel like it's definitely worth it. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this episode. Join me in the next one where we'll really finish building the Trop House and the coaster around it.